We're quickly approaching that time of year, the time where everyone creates resolutions and goals for the new year ahead, filled with hope and promise that things will finally come together over the next 365 days. On Unstuck Entrepreneur, though, we're going to do things a little different. Yes, goals are important for your business and your life, and you should be thinking of your goals for the next year, for sure. But before you do that, you need to create your vision for the year ahead that will guide your goal-making process. That is what we're going to do today in this episode, so stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Sean Miner, and this is Unstuck Entrepreneur. I'm a former nutritionist who turned a struggling, stressful nutrition practice into a thriving, freedom-filled online business where I work from home in my sweatpants while reaching and helping thousands of people all at the same time. Now I'm obsessed with showing other heart-centered coaches, practitioners, and solopreneurs how to build a business and life they love. Consider this podcast your safe space to learn both the inner work and practical strategies required to build the impactful, profitable business of your dreams. No hustle, grind, or long hours required. That's right, hustle culture, not welcome here. Let's get into today's session. Hey, hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Unstuck Entrepreneur Podcast. So happy to have you here. Grateful for your support as always. We have a short episode here for you today, but it's going to end up creating a lot of homework for you, if I'm being totally honest. So short here, but prolonged in your life, which is always a great thing. And the homework that I will be giving you is so incredibly valuable, and so life-changing, you're going to want to do it. First, quick reminder, this will be the last new episode of Unstuck Entrepreneur until January, until the new year, taking my first ever holiday break from podcasting, and we'll be doing a lot behind the scenes. We'll still be showing up on social media, still be showing up in your inbox. If you're not getting my emails, you can sign up to do so at seanminer.com slash links and still continue to connect and get some feedback and advice and encouragement and all those things that we do here on the podcast. I'll still be doing that via email. So just taking a break from the podcast for the next few weeks, and then I'll be back in the new year. So this is your last new episode, which means we got to talk about what's coming up in the new year, what your 2023 or whenever you're listening to this uh, means for you, what your plans are, what your goals are, what your vision is, most importantly, which is what we're going to talk about today. This ties in really well, this whole conversation ties in really well with a book that I really love. It's called Personality Isn't Permanent by Benjamin Hardy. Uh, If you haven't read that, I do recommend it. It's a great book, but there's a section, a pretty big portion actually, of the book that talks about future self work. And the actually very scientific, psychological, in a way, approach to future self-work and why it's so important and why it works. It is a very non-woo-woo book, (laughs) let's just say that. But still, it kind of covers some of the woo, quote unquote, that we talk about here and that a lot of others in the more spiritual, energetic space speak about in a very practical, scientific, like analytical way which is why I love it. I love learning both sides of it. And so I want to take what he talks about in terms of future self-work and apply it to what we're doing right now or about to do when it comes to creating goals and resolutions and intentions and all those things for the upcoming year, because it's about to be a new year. And By the way, I think creating new goals and intentions for the year ahead is a great idea, and I hope you are doing that. I hope you plan to do that. I do have an entire episode. It's actually from the beginning of the year this year that was all about my process for creating goals and 
intentions, and then also how to stay detached from those goals, and also how to chunk up your goals so you actually get them done. (laughs) So there's a lot in that episode. Definitely go back and listen to that. It's called How to Make Sure You Actually Reach Your Goals, episode 130, and I'll link that in the show notes. But Go back and listen to that because yes, I agree with having goals. No, I don't think that you should have your entire energetic and emotional response be attached to your goal. So there is that level of detachment that we need to find when it comes to our goal setting process and staying emotionally detached from that. That is when goals are really super helpful, when we have that level of detachment. But we're not going to talk about that here today. Go back and listen to that episode for that conversation. I want to talk about your vision for the next year. I also want to start with a quote specifically from the book, Personality Isn't Permanent, and it says, it's best to make decisions based on what your future not your present self wants. It's best to decide and act from the vantage point of your desired circumstances, not your present ones. And that really sums up everything we're gonna talk about today. So what we're going to do is a very important precursor to creating your goals and resolutions. And it also could very well be the reason you haven't in the past achieved your goals or stayed with your resolutions uh, or continued to follow your intentions. It all could be because you were missing this piece of the puzzle, which is future self work. Because, of course, this will make a lot of sense as soon as I say it, who you are a year from now is a different version of you than who you are right this very moment as you're listening to this. And so without deciding who that version of you is going to be a year from now and getting connected to that version of you, then yeah, you may create goals for your future, but you're still going to be acting as if you are this current version. You're going to be making decisions from where you're at now, not where your future self is, which means those goals are always going to stay in your future. I mean, to make decisions about your future from where you are now doesn't really make much sense if you think about it, because that's not the same version of you. You are basically two different people. Where you are now to that future self, different versions of you and different people. And that's actually what they talk about in that book is it actually really benefits you to kind of think of yourself as two different people. And what would that person do, that version of you do versus who you are now, this version of you that's here listening now. So if you make decisions based on the current you, you're going to be still in the same spot as you are now, which is why we are spending time first before we set our 2023 business goals, creating that vision of your future self, the December 2023 version of you. Then once you've done that, you can work backwards and think about the things that needed to happen for that to become your reality and those become your goals. So it's a new way of figuring out your goals for the year. Then after that, and here's the very, very important part, from this moment on until December 2023, You are making decisions based on that person. What would that person do, that version of me do? You're moving from that version of you. You're making decisions from that version of you. You're thinking, acting, and speaking like that future version of you. And all of that takes commitment. It takes figuring out 
who that person is and committing to becoming that person. And when you do that and you move from that place and you make decisions from that place, that is when you will make that version of you a reality. There is no other option. It simply has to come to be. So let's now go through the process of creating your future self vision. Let's really dive into who that version of you in December 2023, or again, any time you're listening to this, pick one year out, who is that person? As you all know by now, I am a big fan of visualization. I talk about it a lot. From a practical, scientific perspective, visualizing your future works. <laughs> it works to rewire the neural pathways in your brain over time and with repetition. So we can't just do this once and think everything's going to change. Over time and with repetition, it will rewire those neural pathways to start acting as if you are that future version of yourself. And as I've said many times, many, many times, your brain doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. So every time you are visualizing that version of you, your brain thinks that is real. It doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know that you're just making it up and you're not actually living that out in that moment. Your brain doesn't know the difference. So over time, with repetition, we create a different reality in our brain. And as soon as that happens, there is no other option besides to think, act, move, speak, and behave in that way, which means that becomes your reality. All right, so here is what I want you to do. This is your homework for at least the next month. I told you it was going to be big, a short episode with lots to do. But like I mentioned over and over again already, time and repetition are your friends here. So I really want you to commit to this work, to this process for as much as you can over the next month. Yes, I know historically these months around the holidays and before the new year are busy for a lot of us. There's travel, there's parties, there's family, there's kids out of school, all that stuff. But this really doesn't take that long. You can do this entire process in 10 minutes. Um, So do you have 10 minutes in the morning when you wake up? Before bed is a great option two, or any time throughout the day where you have a few minutes to yourself, do this, prioritize this. We're going to take it, we're going to do a one-two punch here. We're going to take it up a notch. We're going to do both visualizing in our mind's eye and writing about it. So both, not one or the other. I feel like I normally give you the option for one or the other, not this time. We're taking this seriously, we're doing it, both visualizing and journaling together. So for the visualization piece, you are going to get into a comfortable position. You can be seated, you can be lying down as long as you don't fall asleep. That is fine, whatever you can be comfortably doing for five to 10 minutes. Okay, so you'll get into that comfortable position. You're going to take a few deep breaths so that you can calm your nervous system down, calm your ego voice down, and really tap into your inner self. So take a few deep breaths. If you're having a hard time, you can do a quick meditation first. We really want to be in that meditative, receptive state. So whatever helps you get there. If you need a bath or, or whatever, all the self-care, do that. Whatever can help you get into that space. Close your eyes, obviously. Try not to fall asleep. And I want you to get a visual of this in as much detail as you possibly can. It is exactly one year from now, and you are so excited, thrilled, happy with everything you've been able to accomplish over the past year. 
you are proud of yourself for the progress you've made over the past year. And you decide to do something special to celebrate your achievements. Now, I want you to visualize that celebration in as much detail as you possibly can. How are you celebrating? Who are you with? Where are you? What's the weather like? What are you wearing? What are you doing? And most importantly, how do you feel? Is there a smile on your face? Are you laughing? Or are you calm and peaceful? How do you feel in that moment of pure celebration and feeling so proud of yourself for everything you've accomplished? Once you have that visual, I want you to stay in it for as long as you can. Like I said, at least shoot for five minutes, 10, 15 would be awesome. Stay there for as long as you can and really soak up that moment, specifically that feeling of how it feels to have accomplished what you wanted to accomplish and um, to be able to celebrate that and to feel that pride. I really want you to soak up that moment. Okay, so you're going to do that first. Then ideally, you have your journal next to you so you can open your eyes and without going back to full-on reality while still in that kind of meditative space with that visual fresh, you can do your journaling. And first, I would recommend just writing out that visual that you just created in your head, write out who was there, what you were doing, how it felt, what you were wearing, all that stuff that you just created in your mind, write it out physically. And then I want you to answer some of these questions, really journal on it, take your time. The first prompt, what did you achieve in the past year? And I want you to make a list of everything you accomplished in that year, everything in your business, in your personal life, whatever you feel is important to share. What did you achieve over that year? Now, what did you do to achieve that? Now take each one and write out what you did to achieve that. And then once you have all of that, I really want you to stay there where all of this has already happened and from that place, answer these questions. Who are you? And not like your name and birthday and I'm a mom. Not that, although if you want to say those things, great, do it. But also, who are you? Are you a six-figure entrepreneur? Are you a full-time coach? What is your role? What is your identity as that new version of you? So write that out and start with the words, I am, and write as many sentences as you can, starting with, I am. Then answer the question, what do you have? So as this future version of you, what do you have? And start your sentences with, I have, and go for it. You can go, I have X number of clients, or you can go, I have a sense of peace. You can go in all directions with that, and all of them are great. So get as many as you can. And then lastly, how do you feel? Of course, the most important is really getting into that feeling, those emotions, that energetic expression of that future version of you. And start your sentences with, I feel. And you can write as many emotions, feelings, all the things that come up. So that is your journaling exercise, those prompts. Now, do you need to do this every day? That would be great. But like I said, I know we're all very busy, especially around this time of year. So can you commit to a few times per week over the next month to do this? And perhaps it becomes habit by then, and you can really put this in as part of your self-care practice, your mindset practice as something you do regularly. 
And then you always are working towards becoming that next version of you instead of staying stuck in your current version. But with this exercise in particular, what I really want you to do and why I want you to do this right now is that when it does come time to create your goals within the next month or so as we approach the beginning of the year, now you create your goals from that version of you and you commit to becoming that version of you, which means the actions you take and the decisions you make come from that version of you, not you that's listening right now. Because the you that's listening right now is not the same. And I say this, and I really want to make sure that you get this, most of us make decisions based on our present not our future, or even our past. We make decisions based on our past, not our future. And then we continue to repeat the same things over and over, and we continue to stay stuck and not get anywhere. Whereas if we just make that shift, and first of all, really understand that future that we want to become, and then once we have that, we can make decisions and make movement from that place. And I can guarantee you those decisions are very, very different than the decisions of your present or past self. So that is why we have to do this. Because I really want the next year, I want you to take action from that future self. Because that is how then in one year's time, what you just created, that vision is actually going to be happening. It will be your reality. You will be celebrating with those people or doing those things and wearing that outfit and celebrating all those accomplishments because you acted from there starting now. How cool is that? I think it is very, very cool. So do this future self work first. And then even in your journal, the journaling practice that you're doing with everything I just laid out for you, in there lies your goals for the next year because you are writing down your achievements, your accomplishments, and what you did to get there. Well, what you did to get there, those are your goals, right? And you can chunk those up and break them down throughout the year as they work for you, but it's kind of already done for you. So that's why I want you to do this first and then take action from your future self. Now, if you'd like some extra guidance with this process, specifically the visualization, I have a 10-minute guided visualization that I would love to offer you completely free. It will really help you with this process. It is an actually an audio recording that I created for my money mindset coaching experience, and I want to gift it to you. It will take you through that process of getting into your future self space with that vision of what's happening and who's around you and what it looks like. It will guide you through that process. So the only thing I'm asking in return is that you help spread the message about this podcast. I want you to take a screenshot of your favorite Unstuck episode or a picture of you listening to the show or a picture of your walk while you're listening to the show or whatever you do while listening to this podcast. Take a picture, take a screenshot and share it on your social media, whether that's Instagram stories, Facebook stories, your feed, whatever it is that you use. And let me know why you love listening to the Unstuck Entrepreneur podcast. Be sure to tag me so that I can see it. And in return, I will send you a link to that visualization exercise and you can download it and keep it on your device forever for as long as you want and continue to go back to it. And really, it will help you so much with this exercise and really committing to creating your future self before you set your goals for the year. 
And that's it. That's all you got to do. And it would really just help me get the word out about the show and what we're about here, what we talk about, what we do, what's important, and how we can really bring this message of aligned businesses and following your passion and purpose and creating a business and life you love. So that will really help the show. And I would be so, so grateful for that. And I would love to gift you this visualization in return. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. I will be back with a bunch of fresh new episodes in the new year. And let's definitely keep in touch over on Instagram at Sean Miner. I guess I should have told you that when I was telling you to tag me in your uh, post. At Sean Miner is where I'm at on Instagram and Sean Miner Holistic Health on Facebook. And let's make sure we're pen pals too. So seanminer.com slash links to get in on my weekly newsletters that have tons of advice and tips and techniques and all the stuff that you need to build a business you love. All right, my friends, until next time, take care. Hey friend, real quick before you go, don't forget to head over to my website and take the quiz to find out your solopreneur personality type. I've created a super fun, super informative two minute quiz that will show you which one of the four solopreneur personality types you fall into. Could it be the boss, the socialite, the visionary, or the supporter? Which one are you? Not only is it just fun to know more about yourself, especially as it relates to your business, but it's also really important information so you can be sure that you're building a business that works for you based on your energy, your personality, and your desires. Did you ever take those quizzes from the Cosmopolitan magazine back in the day? It's kind of like that, but with actual solid questions and real helpful tips and advice at the end. You can find the What's Your Solopreneur Personality Type quiz right on the homepage of my website at seanminer.com. Head there now to take the quiz, then let me know over on Instagram at Unstuck Entrepreneur what your type is. I'll see you over there.